Hey everyone. So uh, you know that you're moving fast enough when you're sitting in a meeting and someone says, that makes me want to puke. They're talking about going live with the new system, putting something in um, that's going to change their world. And this happened to me just recently and uh, I we all had a giggle. Uh, like legit, this person had had this moment of, oh my gosh, are we there already yet? Hang on, I'm not ready. And I want to just unpack that because I think we're procrastinating a whole heap and we don't even know that we're doing it. And the the biggest hurdle to you moving faster is is really getting out there and doing it and that taking action. And we have a whole bunch of systemic little roadblocks and uh, and I guess comfort factors that are built into the way that we work. They're often called policy, procedure, um, method. And I want to start to unpick some of that stuff because it's holding us up. So the biggest hurdle to you moving faster in your transformation program is getting people using the new system. Um, I do a lot of technology change programs as part of broader business transformation. And the biggest thing, honestly, the biggest thing, the biggest hurdle is about getting people in and using it, getting people in doing the thing, getting people in using the new system. And, uh, you know, we, we have all of these layers of procrastination built into the way that we work. So even if we're running agile work teams and we're running these agile work practices, even if we're talking about iterative delivery, often we hold back from that conversation about, okay, now we're taking that next step because there's always something more that we need. There's always just that little, there's just that one more thing before we'll be ready, before we have enough. And that's what's holding you back. So the biggest hurdle that you can get through is how do I get people in and using the system? Now, when I start to talk like this, people often freak out and think that we're talking about throwing something in um, without any preparation and heading down this path. And that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the tools that we've learned that we have used to do our due diligence thus far, the tools that we've learned through our management and our leadership training to do due diligence around when, when we are ready, those are the wrong tools. So when we talk about requirements gathering and design documents and you know, building out and testing and all of those things that go along with your traditional kind of program management approach, a lot of those things are about let's theorize the answer and distill it into some form, um, usually some form of documentation. And then if we go through and do this enough and we follow that method, then at the end of having distilled all of these things into documents and into built systems and then into a big test and then we're ready to release, that, that process takes a long time. And all of those tools that we've had thus far, design documents, requirements gathering, you know, documentation, they're not completely unnecessary, of course not. But what they do do is they hold us up. They're not the right tools for true due diligence. True due diligence is about understanding, is this thing going to work? Is it going to work for me, for my business, in my context, with my customers? And you can't get that from theory. You can't get that from a technology supplier saying, we can fulfill these requirements. We can fulfill this technical capability because you're still imagining what that technical capability is going to look like in your business. And when you're imagining, you're not doing the due diligence. So the real tools for due diligence that we need to adopt are to start to test this stuff in our organization. It's why you'll hear all of us agile practitioners crank on about build work in small chunks, get stuff in market, test with customers, get feedback, learn, respond, build the next thing. Those are the true due diligence tools that you need to actually move faster. And so when this person was in this meeting with me and saying, you know, that makes me want to puke, it was because we'd got to that point where we'd actually done all of the due diligence that we could about a thin slice of functionality. And the next thing we needed to do was not go and do a whole bunch of conversation and design meetings and requirements gathering and is the system going to work for all of the other functionality that we needed? What we needed to do was get that thing out working for customers and get that first round of feedback so that we could then incorporate that into the next thing that we do. And that's what made this person feel really nervous because all of a sudden, 
it felt way too early. And to be honest, when does life ever throw anything at you at the time that you're truly ready? It's a total myth. You're always out there doing something and then life throws a curveball and you just have to cope. And so when we start to place less weight on things like paper and documentation or, and deep diving into design and, and we start to play down the emphasis on those things and we start to build up the emphasis around what's the smallest thing that we can do to test this with customers in market and we start to build up placing weight on getting people in and using the new technology system getting people that's your 80 percent hurdle because if you can get people in there if you can get them testing if you can get your team operating in that space you've got over that big mental mindset shift around we're changing because all of a sudden you've started the piece that says this is new normal You've started that bit that says, hey, this is this is the new way of doing things. You're no longer building up to a new way of working. You're actually working in the new way. You're actually working with the new system. So that's your biggest mental hurdle. And that's the thing that's going to slow you down because it's so easy to go back to, oh, but we need another design session or, oh, we haven't thought about this thing yet. And so the solution to that systemic procrastination that we've built in our management theory and our manage and our conceptual frameworks for leadership, the antidote to that systemic procrastination is to go, what's the smallest thing that we can do to, we can get into market to test for our customers now, get people working in that way. And then once you're over that hurdle, it's the next thing. And what's the next smallest thing after that? And so you're building that momentum. So that was what I want to share with you today, uh, because I think we're all guilty of it. It's all too easy to fall back into those methods and, um, and those tools that are widely accepted across our organization. And to think that because they're comfortable and because they're familiar and because they're widely accepted, that they're actually doing the job when the reality is you're just not. Because design documents and ticking off a functionality list that you've that you've developed and having somebody say, we can provide the technological capability to do this thing, it's a totally different conversation to the question that you're really wanting to answer, which is, is this work going to work for me? Will it work in my business? Will it work in my context? Will it work with my customers? And the only way that you can test that, the only way you can do that true due diligence is to have something out there in market working with your customers. And then you, what you want to do is make sure that you're not trying to do too much at once. That's where the small chunks come in because that's how you actively manage your risk, how you manage your appetite for change, how you start to build momentum. So that's what I want to leave you with today. Uh, I hope that's kind of blown your minds a little bit. Leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having an awesome, awesome day. We'll see you again next week.